At each gate the shearers stood as the whistle loudly blew. With eyebrows fixed and mouths tit tight, the shearers all set to. Hark to the clicking of the shears as through the wool they glide. And see our ringer already on the whipping side. He means to have those bellies off and top knots off likewise. So do be quick. None of your tricks or away you'll go like flies. Yes, the scene it is a lively one and ought to be admired. There's never been a better board since Jackie Howe expired. No church bell rings them from the track. No pulpit lights their blindness. Tis hardship, drought and homelessness that teaches those bushmen kindness. The mateship born in barren lands of toil and thirst and danger, the camp fair for the wanderers set, the first place for the stranger. They do the best they can today, take no thought of the morrow, their way is not the old world way, they live to lend and borrow. When shearing's done and checks gone wrong, they call it time to slither. They saddle up and say so long and ride the Lord knows whither. Though he may be brown or black, or wrong man there or right man, the mate that's honest to his mates, they call that man a great man. They tramp in mateship side by side, the Protestant and the Roman. They call no biped lord or sir, and touch their hat to no man. They carry in their swags, perhaps, a portrait and a letter, and maybe deep down in their hearts the hope of something better. Where lonely miles are long to ride and long hot days recurrent, there's lots of times to think of men they might have been but weren't. They turn their faces to the west and leave the world behind them. Their drought dry graves are seldom set where even mates can find them. They know too little of the world to rise to wealth and greatness, but in these lines I gladly pay my tribute to their straightness. when he wrote those lines. With the introduction of sheep and wool, soon came, they became the mainstay of Australia. And at one time there was, they were even quoted, the wool was, on the stock exchanges in Charters Towers and in Burke. And spoken of in the same revered breath as the elusive gold. But wool was easier to find. <laughs> wool became such an important commodity that there was even a movement to incorporate it with the name of the new capital city of Australia. Woolbourne was proposed. <laughs> but Canberra won through. Canberra is an Aboriginal word, as you probably know, meaning place of winds. Appropriate enough seeing it's where our parliament sits. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's a good sheep station ruin. The old time shearing industry was indeed a, a vibrant one, and all the men who shore the sheep were extremely skilled, hard working, and equally hard living. Some became household names. Jackie Howe was the champion blade shearer, and in October of 1892, he shore a, a total of 327 ewes in seven hours and 20 minutes at the Alice Down Station in Queensland. A few years later, he shore 337 sheep in eight hours, but that was with the machine shears. 
He did spend some time in hospital after to recuperate. And I'm sure that some of the sheep did as well. <laughs> anyway, they named a singlet after him. Yeah, that's fame for you. I Don't Go Shearing Now is a musical tribute to the Australian shearer and will take us through the lives and hardships endured by this hardy breed of men. Most of them held bent on drinking their hard-earned checks and then slither up and slide, a term used by the repentant morning after lamb down shearers as they left the shanty or wherever they drunk their check before heading off down the track to wherever in the never never land. So you're up to Riverina where the sun is shining clear and the ewes and lambs are bleating calling sheer as far and near and the master where the grass is always high The July fogs are climbing up The sun beams to the sky And the carpenters are busy Fixing gates and pens and bins While the presser's just to kill time Press in bales the winter skin Ah, my lad, you needn't smile For I know exactly how The shearing sheds will get you Though I don't go shearing now No, I don't go shearing Three clear days, if you are lucky, you'll be there before the roll. And the splendour of the springtime will suffice your youthful soul. And you'll pay an early visit to your working pen, I'll bear. Travel with you where the mind. 
blows and the days are always sunny the noisy quirking crows are flying around the wash pans the sweating pans are full of to have some tea and damper and be all among To saddle up and sliver and to have another try. But those days are now behind me, for I know exactly how the rheumatism gets me, so I don't go shearing now. No, I don't. Sixteen shearers shearing in a row. The whistle toots and away they go with siding blows and second cuts and half the rousies sewing up guts. Every shearer dreamt of possessing the drive and determination to be the best in the shed. The gun shearer and the ringer or the ringer, he was the one who shore the most sheep and earned the most money. Being on the chain, as they said, was the last place any self-respecting shearer would ever want to be. This meant he shore the least amount and made the least money. One of the has-beens preempts the glory days of Jackie Howe, who I mentioned, as there's no mention of him in this song, uh, but due recognition is given to others who were known around the sheds as gun or ringers before 1892. The tune is a well-known Northumberland air that had the words for the song Cushy Butterfield, you might know that one, set to it in the 19th century by George Ridley. In the late 1800s, the shearer and poet Robert Stewart wrote this set of words. He called it one of the has -beens. I'm one of the has -beens, a shearer I mean. I once was a ringer, I used to shear clean. I could make the wool roam off easy, like the soil from the plough. But you may not believe me, for I can't do it.
sure those 327 ewes in a working day using the blade shears, he was also fetching the sheep from the pens himself. Most shearers would aim to shear at least a hundred sheep a day and push for a few more on top of that. Some of the large stations, well, they would have huge mobs of sheep. One station was so large it had 40 cooks just to cook for the cooks. <laughs> 15,000 sheep would not be unusual and the shearers would be away toiling with the wool for many weeks. They would be well used to the large numbers and would often relish the amount mustered to be shorn because then their boasting and exaggeration could run riot. <laughs> There's a story of one particular gun shearer and a true story as none of my lies are true and at least I believe that's how it is though the man who told me might have been a liar another man said he was a liar yeah. uh, but then he might have been a liar himself a third bloke said he was one I heard that there was a fight over it but the man who told me about the fight may not have been telling the truth I'll let Martin tell the story. He, he was in a pub, shanty bar or whatever, hostelry it was, when in walks a cocky farmer. A cocky farmer is generally a small time farmer. The cocky asks the bar in general if there were any shearers who were looking for an extra bit of work. Up steps the gun shearer and says, yeah, how many sheep you got? The cocky replies, 200. OK, says the shearer, reaching for his pocket notebook. Can I have their names? <laughs> the song Ard Tack tells of a shearer taking on the same amount of sheep with the added incentive of the cocky farmer owning his own vineyard and maybe offering the shearer the odd glass of pinky red wine. I Yes, I am, and I've shorn and sheep and lamb from the river to the Darling Downs and back. And I've run a sheep of blue with the walls as tough as blue. But I'll tell you where I made my hardest back. I was down by the way, making canoe from day to day till the big shed started moving. Six weeks went by with one day and a sigh. Well, I 
kick the poor old cobbler down the street. <laughs> Gathered up the cobbler's way, and I staggered on the way from the hardest bloody shed I ever shared. Shearing is a hard and extremely physical job and in the old days often in very poor conditions. The Shearers Union played an important role in improving the working conditions of the men, including more time to relax and enjoy a smoke up. The Shearers were justifiably proud of their role in Australia's financial boom times, especially in the colonial golden era when they rode high on the sheep's back. Generally, Shearers earned very good money, and they still do, but they certainly had to fight for their rights and better conditions. They sowed the seeds of early organised labour and their main union, the Amalgamated Workers' Union, was saluted with the battle cry, Hurrah, hurrah to the union we'll adhere. Hurrah, hurrah, we'll be stronger still next year. A half pound a hundred for the sheep and rations not too dear. Oh, hurrah for the amalgamated union. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's it. Ba, ba, merino sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three hundred bags full. One hundred for the shearer, one hundred for his dame, and one hundred for the dirty good who lives on the game. Ba, ba, merino sheep, that is hardly fair. Won't you give the squatter just a little share? No, sir, no, sir, he's got chance and tanks, but don't you know his merino sheep are all mortgaged to the bank? The Shearers strike of 1891, which was a very bitter struggle of arbitration, whose master, whose man, resulted in widespread changes in the industry and the Australian political arena, including the formation of the Australian Labor Party. So uh, they certainly played a, a role in changing the face of Australia. The Shearer's life was predictably tragic. After several weeks of shearing, the men would head off to the next shed, often stopping at a watering hole and present their hard-earned cheque to the landlord or landlady of the shanty. And with them keeping a tally of the amount consumed as the drinks went down their throat, it was customary that they would be three days drinking and then they would be thrown in the dead house. The Australian custom of the shout was many a man's downfall. The thirst is short and throats are long, all in the hearts of men. Drinking beer makes you feel the way you ought to feel without drinking beer. <laughs> See that big white cloud up there all white and frothy at the top? just like a jug of beer? Well, if that cloud should burst, the beer would all run out, for it's just the cloud of thirst. <laughs> After the check had been duly swallowed, it was then time for the remorseful shearer to saddle up and slither, or, having sold his horse to continue to finance his spree, he'd just slither whilst on his journey to wherever. He then had time to reflect on what could have been. In the Battle of the Grog, the Grog often won. There once was a shearer by name Louis Brink, a devil for work and a terror for drink. He could hear his 500 a day without fear and drink without pink and ten gallons of now Jimmy the barman who served out the drink He hated the sight of this here blue drink He'd 
came much too early, he came much too soon. At morning, at evening, and round about noon. Well, one morning as Jimmy, he opened the bar. Along comes old Bluey, a howling with us. Whatever you've got, Jim, just give it to me now. Whatever you've got, Jim, just give it to me first. Well, it ain't down in history, it ain't down in print. This year I drank acid with never a wink. Saying that's the stuff, Jimmy, I'll strike me plain then. This'll make me the ringer of Stevenson's shed. Well, all the next day as he served out the drink, old Jimmy was shaken with the horrors and fear.
processing growth with that song. <laughs> no grog was allowed on the stations, and especially when the shearing was on. It was too dangerous for man and for beast. So, the night before they signed on, some hard cases would go on the rantan to tide them over for the time that they would be away shearing and they'd be dry. Old Bill the shearer had been phoned to catch the train next day. He had a shed at Mungandine, an early start for me, so he rolled his swag and packed his bag and he scurried off to bed, but for sleep he could not see a wink to soothe his aching head. He heard the missus snoring loud. He heard a ticking clock. He heard the midnight train blow in. <laughs> he heard a crowing cock. <laughs> now Bill, all in a stupor lay. A dreaming now was he. All loaded up and pens are out. He's sure in number three. <laughs> he grabbed the missus in his sleep and he sure her like a you. First work soon was done. Then down the neck he flew. As he picked her up and dumped her, down the whipping side he tore. She dare not kick or wriggle, she'd seen him sheer before. <laughs> he was leading Mick the Ringer. He was leading Pete the Brute when he picked her up and kicked her. Like a hogger down the chute. He was staring out the window, half awakened from his sleep. When he saw the missus lying on the footpath in a heap. <laughs> God blimey, I've had some nightmares after boozing up a treat. And I walked without no trousers to the pub across the street. But this one, yeah, it takes some beating and I think I'll have to keep it. I dare not tell me covers I saw or I sure the missus in me sleep. <laughs> We finished shearing sheep out the west of the Peru, but now it's rained three inches. I don't know what to do. A week ago the sand was loose, dust blew every day, but now the mud is three feet deep. We can't get. He said the bull is two miles wide, cross it, there's no hope. You hear a lot of people swear about the dough we make, but they forget the price of beer, all the cones we break. It might have been a good job once, those old hands had their brains. They pushed a bike from shed to shed, lived on Johnny Cakes. They had more time to do the job, they worked nine hours a day. And after paying for their grub, one pound a hundred pay. I think They tell me it's dead easy Some of these women 
women would have uh, recently arrived from England, marrying shortly after reaching Australia, then hauled away by bullock dray up into the Never Never Land. A sobering experience. They must have been brave and formidable women. Others would have been born and raised in the bush and were familiar with their harsh surroundings, but even so, they suffered from extreme loneliness, left behind with their children, along with the heartbreak and the anxiety of no news of their husbands away shearing or droving for months at a time. alcohol not allowed but no women were to be on the board in the shearing sheds and there were very few occasions when they did appear the cry went out fucks on the water <laughs> whenever ladies were seen to be approaching being deprived of their two favorite uh, possession passions beer and ladies or should i say ladies first ladies and beer 
The men would resort to their own fantasies and conjure up scenes when both would be playing an important and normal part in their daily lives, not only when shearing, but relaxing as well. The ladies are coming, the super says, to the shearers sweltering there, and ladies means in the shearing shed, don't cut them too bad, don't swear. The ghost of a pause in the shed's rough heart and lower is bowed each head, then nothing is heard save a whispered word and the roar of the shearing shed. The tall, shy rouser has lost his wits. His limbs are all astray. He leaves a fleece on the shearing board and his broom in the shearer's way. There's a curse in store for that jackaroo. All down by the walls he slants. But the ringer bends with his long legs askew and wishes he'd patch them pants. <laughs> there are girls from the city. Our hearts rebel as we squint at their dainty feet. And they gush and say in a girly way, Oh, the, the dear little lambs are sweet. <laughs> and Bill, the ringer, who'd scorned the use of a childish word like damn, would give a pound that his tongue was loose as he tackles a lively lamb. Swift thought of home in the coastal towns, of rivers and waving grass, and a weight on our hearts that we cannot define that comes as the ladies pass. But the rouser ventures in a nervous dig in the ribs of the next to him, and Baku says to his penmate, Twig the style of that last one, Jim. <laughs> <coughs> Jim Moodnight gives her a careless stare, then catches his breath with pain. His strong hand shakes and the sunbeams dance as he bends to his work again. But he's well disguised in a bristling beard, bronze skin and his shearer's dress. And whatever he knew or hoped or feared was hard for his mates to guess. Jim Moonlight, wiping his broad white brow, explains with a doleful smile, a stitch in the side and he's all right now. But he leans on the beams a while and gazes out in the blazing noon on the clearing brown and bare. She has come and gone like a breath of June in December's heat and glare. The Bushmen are big, rough boys at best, with hearts of a greater growth. But they hide those hearts with a brutal jest and the pain with a reckless oath. Though the bills and gyms of the bush bard sing of their life loves lost or dead, the love of a girl is a sacred thing not voiced in a shearing shed. <laughs> Sheds 
it's cut out in spite of the long hot days cause every hour them girlies waltzed in with whiskey and beer on trays oh there were two of them girlies to every chap and pretty as pretty could be there were two of them girls to every chap and six of them Separated love is always a subject of folk song. This song, modelled on a much older song, finds a shearer ready to depart and his sweetheart ready to join him in times rough and tough. But we're talking about a different century, so things weren't to be.
two shearers were tramping along the track, going from one sheep station to the next to take up a stand. A long, tiring day's tramp and maybe a few more days ahead of them. As they passed by a large paddock, one of them glanced at the sheep quietly grazing there. There's 476 in that paddock, he said. That's truth, said his mate, amazed at the speed of counting the number of sheep. How'd you do that so fast? Oh, it was easy, replied the first one. You just count the legs and divide by four. <laughs> Well, I come from the south and my name is Field When my blades are properly steel Well, a hundred and odd I bury up the field And of course I'm a ryback shearer And if I don't shear a tally before I go My shears and stones in the river To prove I'm a Ryback There's a bloke on the board and I heard him say I couldn't shear a hundred sheep in a day Ah, oh, but one fine day I'll show him the way And prove I'm a Ryback and if I don't shear a tally before I go, my shears and stone in the river I'll throw. And I'll never open sorbies or take another blow to prove I'm a right shearer. Well, I'll make me splash and I won't say when. I'll hop off my tail high and in. To the pen while the ring is shearing five, I'll be shearing ten and prove I'm a Ryback shearer. And if I don't shear a tally before I go, my shears and stone in the river I'll throw, and I'll never open sorbies or take another blow to prove I'm a Skin, a very long nose and he shaves on the chin And a voice like a billy goat dancing in a tin And of course he's a Ryback shearer And if I don't shear a tally before I go My shears and stone in the river I'll Take another blow to prove I'm a Ryback Shearer. Good songs, and the old bush songs have got a habit of sticking in your mind. That song from the singing of Jack Blonskin was collected by John Meredith, who also collected the words from a bloke called Ernie Sibley in the beer garden of the Orient Hotel in Mudgee in New South Wales in the 1950s. Uh, John recalled the scene in his book, Folk Songs of Australia. The four remembered verses were taken down and after another beer, Ernie set off on his push bike. Ten minutes later, he jumped off his bike and breathlessly came back and added the chorus. He'd suddenly remembered it on the way home. <laughs> In the mid-1960s, I did a tour in Australia of the capital cities with some other singers. One of these was Duke Tritton. Duke was a great man and well into his 70s at the time. He first started shearing 
back in 1905 and had some wonderful songs and stories, one of them shearing in a bar he had written many years before. The story he told about this was that after one particular spree, when shearing was over, the song was written to the tune of When Irish Eyes Were Smiling. On the morning after, he found that he could not sing it to that tune while sober, as he could not reach the high notes. The solution was to either stay inebriated or to write another tune. One of the concerts we did on this tour was at the Canberra Conservatorium of Music. The audience mainly comprised of music academia and classically trained musicians. They had come to the concert dressed to the nines in dinner jackets and tiaras. I can't remember what the ladies wore. As, <laughs> as this was to be the tour's last concert, we had all had a few beers to celebrate, Duke included. Duke went on to perform and was inspired by the beer when singing Shearing in a Bar. He became so involved in the song that at one point he started to shear an imaginary sheep on stage to the delight and rapturous applause of the audience. Unforgettable. No self-respecting shearer would ever admit to calling for ta the tar boy. The tar boy was on hand to dab a sheep where it had been pinked by an other enthusiastic shearer. Some sheep ended up looking more like Dalmatians. <laughs> My shearing days are over, though I never was the gun. I could always do my 20 at the end of every run. I used the old trade union shears and the blades were bobbin full as I pushed them through the knockers and I clipped away the wool. I sure at Guriana War and never got the sack from Breeza down to Comprador I always could go back and though I am a truthful man I find when in a bar that my tally seems to double and I never calls for time when shearing on the western plains where the fleece is full of sand and the clover burr and corkscrew grass are the things to try your hand where the sheep are tall and wiry that live on the Mitchell grass and every second one of them is close to the cobbler class and a pen shed full of cobblers is a shearer's dream of hell so wild and lurid are their cries when they hit one on the bell but when you pour and down the grog you'll hear no calls for tar for the shearer never cuts them when he's shearing in a bar. At Louth I got the bell sheep, a wrinkled tough old brute, who never stopped his kicking till I tossed him down the chute. My wrist was aching badly, but I bought him all the way. Oh, I couldn't afford to miss a pen. I must earn my quid a day. So when I took a strip of skin, I'd hide it with my knee. Turn the sheep around a bit so the right now couldn't see. And quietly catch the rousey's eye and softly whisper tar. But it doesn't seem to happen when I'm cheering in the bar. I chore away the belly wool and I trim the crutch and hocks. 
up around the neck while the round sea swept the locks and smartly turned the sheep around and landed him on his rear. Two clips to take away the wig, I also took an ear. <laughs> then down along the shoulder, my blades were open wide as I went for the long blow and down the whipping side. And when I threw the fleece upon the floor, it was really black with tar. But it doesn't seem to happen when I'm shearing in the bar. <coughs> now when the season's over, my grandsons all come back in their vanguards and their holding. Well, I was always on the track. They come and take me into town and fill me up with beer. And I sit on a corner stool and listen to them cheer. Oh, there's not a lot of difference. It must make the angels weep to hear a mob of young shearers in a bar of shearing sheep. Oh, the sheep go rattling down the race. There's never a call for tar. For the shearers never cut them when they're shearing in a bar. Now memories come clouding in, they wipe away the years. And my hands beginning to tighten, and I think I feel the shears. I want to tell them of the sheds, the sheds where I have shorn. For 50 years, or maybe more, before these lads were born. I want to speak of Yarrick, Glen, Dunlop and Wingardee. But the beer had started working and I'm wobbling at the knees. I better not start cheering, I'd be sure to call the tar and be treated like a black leg when I'm shearing in a bar. Come all you ringers of renown, great knights of the shearing board, I'll tell you all the frightful facts of the famous Finnis fraud. It was the most colossal crime that ever disgraced our land and was perpetrated against myself and the rollicking ringers band. I'd been shearing up in Queensland where the diamond tina flows and the lambs at birth are six foot high and the dreaded hoop snake grows. The cones and cutters are two feet wide and they really jar your hand as you plough through half a tonne of fleece and a hundred weight of sand. The trains run up and down the board from the ringer to the learner's pen and it takes a mighty gun to ring them sheds with a thousand men. Well, I've rung them sheds on the Brisbane side as I've always done, from the Kiwi Isles to the Northern Plains, from the East to the Setting Sun. And the banana benders had to admit I was still the greatest gun. And every Sunday after dark, they'd light enormous fires and hold spectacular concerts there with poetry and choirs. And vocalists and orchestras, the finest in the land, they had the greatest group of all, the famous Ringer's Band, for the Ringer's Band was a non pareil said with all due modesty, for the Ringer's Band was my bloody band, and the Ringer, well that was me. 
Yes, we cleaned up every championship in music, poem and song. Though they brought the Sydney Symphony up and Joan Sutherland came along. <laughs> and his Tito Go Gobby Joker came to try and win the cup. But when he heard my euphonious voice, I'm afraid he just gave up. <laughs> and so our fame began to spread to every corner of the earth. And theatres offered us contracts by the thousand dollars worth. Like La Scala, they was after us and so was Sadler's Wells. And the Follies Berger wanted us as backing for their gulls. <laughs> but we had to knock them back, you know, you'll appreciate no doubt, that we couldn't leave the shearing till the northern sheds cut out. But when they did, we rolled our swags and off around the world be cheered and mobbed wherever our performances were held. But you can't believe the price of fame and the dangers that we faced, like being chased by Sheilas, who themselves were far from chaste. <laughs> or having your flaming clothes ripped off by a screaming teenage mob. I tell you, mate, it made us appreciate the good old shearing job. Yeah. So we would, our final season run, and it happened to be road. And we rolled our swags and packed our gear and off we went for home. Now, having played in theatres, they claim were Europe's best, having played for the Bolshoi Valley, <laughs> Convent Garden and all the rest, we reckon we were ready now for our most demanding test. For though we'd won the bouquets yet, we'd never won the flower. We'd never once completed in the finis amateur hour. <laughs> For the little town of Finnis in the land where they eat the crows is the venue once a year for this most wonderful of shows. And the program looks like someone just ripped out the leading page of the who's who in the theatre and the international stage. For the greatest artists gather there, musicians, poets and singers but this time placed above them in gold print was the ringers. Well, Nureyev danced and Sutherland sang and Yehudi played his piece. And Bobby Helpman played the part of the Merchant of Venice. <laughs> and all of them great performers drew tumultuous applause till the volume swelled and busted all the hinges off the doors. <laughs> But it was like a deathly silence compared to the mighty rage that burst forth from the audience when the ringers hit the stage. Well, we gave them the Lachlan Tigers and you should have heard the din. Even if we'd left it at that, we couldn't have helped but win. But they begged for more and we had to oblige, so we gave them more and more. And after every number came an ever-increasing roar till I sang top H and shattered every window on the floor. <laughs> but we whipped up such delirium somewhere nearly round the bend. So we thought on this climatic note the show had better end. But as the applause was dying away to a kind of deafening shout, it appeared there was one more item we'd all forgotten about. An act put on by animals owned by a greasy roustabout. Well, there then appeared before us the most incredible of sights. For sure enough, two animals came and stood before the lights. And one of them, a wombat, waddled over to the <laughs> piano and prepared to accompany a vocalist in the form of a goanna. <laughs> now, this is Bloody Dinkum, and there were hundreds seen it too. I wouldn't try to pull your legs. I wish it wasn't true. But as soon as that wombat played a couple of introductory chords, the goanna stands up large as life with its hind legs on the boards. And then the most amazing sight that ever caught your eye, this scrawny old goanna sings Flash Jack from Gundagai. <laughs> it was the kind of thing you dream about when you've had too much to drink. The audience was so thunderstruck you could hear their eyelids blink. <laughs> so the roustabout goes up on the stage and whispers behind its paw and blow me down, those animals prepare to play some more. 
And though it was fairly obvious that they, they were really rather coy, the wombat played and the lizard sang the wild colonial. <laughs> and then they really got going, singing songs both old and uh, new and old. They had a range and a repertoire that would take a dam to hold. The goanna's voice was brilliant and the greatest singer of all time. And it's no exaggeration to say he's a botner voice and mind. And all of the famous artists there acclaimed them to the skies. There wasn't the slightest doubt that these two had easily won the prize. <laughs> and the judges didn't even bother to tally up the score. Well, they made their final exit after the 99th on call. <laughs> and the ringers, magnanimous, cheered them and carried them to the door. And the Rousey accepted the cash prize and he held it very tight after perpetrating what's been called the Great Australian Bite. And we heard them roar with laughter as they rode off through the scrub. And as it turned out, they had reason to laugh at us. Of course, here's the bloody rub. We found out shortly afterwards it was all a monstrous hoax. <laughs> The Rousey had taken the lot of us down, the judges and all those other blokes. Just how we didn't see it. Well, a man must be a goat. But we learned that the Goanna couldn't sing one bloody note, couldn't speak one word of English, couldn't hum one bloody bar. It was just, he was just a tool in the felony of that roustabout Galar. But I soon discovered just how it was done and revealed this fiendish twist. And if ever I get that roused about, he'll feel my flaming fist. He had that blast wombat trained as a damn ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sure a thorough bogey, sure a token main, sure a bigger with I'm trailing out of the collar rain. Before the shearing was over, I wished I was back again. And a shearing for old Tom Patterson on the one tree plain. All among the wool, boys, all among the wool. Keep your blades full, boys, keep your blades full. I can do a respectable tally myself whenever I like to try. And they know me round the country as Flash Jack from down the guy. Oh, if you're a big Willandra, sure a silver and once I drew me blades, boys, upon the fame Baku, a cow and down to try to run as far as Moola made. But I was always glad to get back again on the one tree plain. All among the wool, boys, all among the wool. Keep your blades full, boys, keep your blades full. I can do a respectable tally myself whenever I like to try. And they know me round the country as yes, I shack from Dunderby. Oh, I paint them with a the wolf's lips, brushed with bebos too. I've shaved them in the grease, we lads, the grass seed shine through. But I never slung me pen, me lads, that ever it might contain. Whilst to shearing for old Tom Patterson on the one tree plain. All among the wool, boys, all among the wool. Keep your blades full, boys, keep your blades full. I can do a respectable tiny soap whenever I like to try. And they know me round the country as Flash Jack from Gundagai. I'm 
been wailing up the Lachlan, tossed on Cooper's Creek. And once a runker jingy Shevan blowed it in a week. And when Gabriel blows his trumpet, I'll catch the morning train. And I'll push for old Tom Patterson on the one tree plain. All upon the wall, boys, all upon the wall. Keep your blades full, boys, keep your blades full. I can do a respectable time myself whenever I like to try. And they know me round the country as Flash Jack from Gundagai. Daddy's gone a shearing down the castle ray. And we are all alone now, only you and me. All among the wool boys, keep your white blades full, boys. Daddy loves his baby, parted though we be. All among the wool boys, all among the wool. Keep your blades full, boys, keep your blades full. I can do a respectable tally myself whenever I like to try. And they know me round the country as much tack from Gundagai. The season is over. The shearing is done, the wages are paid and the sprees have begun. But never a shanty gets sight of my checks, for far down the Murray my man, my Annie expects a heart that is faithful, a head that is clear and sufficient provisions to last out the year. Oh, 
Ideally, sheep have to come in neither too wet nor too dry. Like the fishermen back in the old days, when in the early hours of the morning, they would hold out a candle out the window. If the wind blew the flame out, they knew it was too windy to go to sea. And if the wind didn't blow the candle out, then they would know that there was not enough wind to sail. So back to bed. As with the shearers, if it had been too dry, the fleece would be full of dust and sand, making it too gritty to shear. And if it was wet, then this was not good either. Handling a wet sheep with a soggy fleece could cause arthritis in, a, in later life. And the expression of playing the piano, running your hands through the fleece, feeling for a good sheep to shear, was not advisable. Now the weather had been sultry for a fortnight's time or more. The shearers had been driving my
the boss bring out the bottle We'll wet the final block The sun of us may not meet here again And some may meet next season Some not even then And some of us will vanish Some of us will vanish like rain. The first and the last song came from a poem by John Drayman called I Don't Go Shearing Now. Martin has taken the lines out and some of them and replaced them into a narrative verse and thereby making two songs out of one long poem. And if anyone's up for it, he tells me that there are some more scraps uh, that he's sure would make another song again. Uh, that's the folk process at work. <laughs> Look, shearing changed so much with the introduction of the machine shears at the end of the 19th century. But the hearts and souls of the men who were at the infancy of this great industry are maintained in these songs and stories and the folklore of the shearing sheds. This is a tribute to the men who fostered the industry and particularly the men who shore the sheep with their tenacity in the face of adversity, including cantankerous sheep and people and possibly too much liquid slithering and the shearer's downright dinkum Australian character and straightness. So you travel to the shearing Out across the old man plain Through the salt and the blue bush country And you camp one night again On the sand hills by the eight mile Where the grass is always fine and you talk of last year's shearing When you smell the burning pine Though the pine would spoil the damper Oh, I didn't give a dee But I hate the taste of a resin And the ashes in my tea but a shearer on his travels Ain't a fool enough to miss Decent cropping for his horses For a trifle such as this With a saddle for a break wind And the oilcloth tucked in well tinkling of the little tin pot bell and the prat's persistent cropping out towards the old man tank and I'd fall asleep contented while I heard the hobbles clang each day I'd draw still to the shearing further north Leaving winter's chill behind me And the sweet spring bursting forth In all its glistening glory That would fill my heart with cheer And I'd revel in the sunshine As the shearing time To have me filled that the missus made me promise, and to her I made a vow to spare me poor old aching bones, so I don't go shearing now. 
Yes, the missus made me promise For she knows exactly how The rheumatism gets me So I don't go shearing down But the memories, the memories linger on and I'd like you, and we'd all like you, to join in this last song. But thank you very much for coming. Uh, you're guinea pigs. This was the first <laughs> time we've done this. Um, and uh, so thank you very much for coming along. Thank you to Wayne and Gail for yeah. hosting us yeah. here. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we've got no excuse not to join in the finale because... There's not an Australian that doesn't know this song. <laughs> Out on the board, the old shearer stands, grasping his shears in his thin bony hands, fixed is his gaze on the bare bane yo. Glory, you can get so only make the ring a go. Click go the shears, boys, click. Standing, shouting for all hands. 
sorry, they drink hard, they work hard, and they go to hell at last, for God's sake. Click, 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 click.